you you talk about the idea that you can't be in editing mode while creating. Re speak about that a little more because I really want to leave people with that with some actionable stuff on creativity here. Sure, sure. So basically, my formula for uh, unlimited creativity content is to okay. is you lead with emotions and you edit with logic. Right. But unfortunately, in today's world, everyone does like the opposite. Right. They, logic they're focusing on grammar sentence structure punctuation and then once they're done with that they're trying to sprinkle in some creativity so they right. find the whole writing process or creative process as a whole very difficult right flip that when you can just have like a rough idea of what you want to talk about and now you're just free-flowing you're just uh, releasing what your emotions wherever it's pointing you the words will just form on the page then you take a one hour break okay do whatever you want and now you come back and now you're reading back your work and now you're focusing on punctuation sentence structure grammar yes. all that kind of stuff but what you're doing is you're taking a structured approach to creativity uh, your first um your first uh, getting your ideas out there then you're organizing it um, unfortunately, like in school, for example, we're taught, oh, well, there's narrative, there's expository, right within right. these two realms. And you're focused, you're graded so much on your logic. Um, if, if you use the wrong grammar, like you get the red mark, and it's yep. indicating to your subconscious mind, whoa, this is bad. And when you get out into the real world, there's a lot of people that never unleash their creativity again because they think it's work or they think it's something that's associated with little kids. Right. Reality, there's frameworks for it. Right. I love it. Yeah. Looking at the, at the education system and how it can be somewhat anathema, it can be kind of a killer of creativity. I think that's really going to be illuminating to a lot of listeners. They're going to have an aha moment because I can't tell you how many people I've worked with, male and female, who suffered from ADHD that was undiagnosed or things because school stuff was presented in a way that logic and and, th and I know to some extent you have to develop the mechanics of a language before you can go off and, and really focus on creativity, but it's certainly possible to do a better job of teaching them concurrently or, or varying a little bit because people with ADHD really will start to tune out when it's all drudgery and you don't get the fun part of, of writing out of the gate and you just, you just tune off. So right. yeah. In many cases, like in, I, and I get that too. Like you need logic at the end of the day. Sure. There's this thing where it's totally like blocks. logic helps you learn the frameworks and then creativity allows you to explore with those frameworks. It's kind of like the, the quote you hear, you, you learn the rules to see how you could break the rules. Yes. I love that quote, by the way. Yeah. Yes. And just uh, one more thing about the school system. I, I do believe the school system conditions many people to focus on the results over the process. Oh, absolutely. Which, yes, which in many ways kind of takes away uh, the gratitude that people have to kind of recondition themselves back with in the real world. Because in yeah. school, you're not rewarded for how hard you're, you studied, you're rewarded for your test score. Right. And now you're in the real world, you never give yourself, a, unfortunately, you don't give yourself a pat on the back for how hard you're working, how much progress yeah. you're just kind of thinking, oh, well, uh, I don't have this yet. So this is something I want your listeners to understand that uh, it's very important to reverse that mentality once you get into the real world. Really focus on the process so you can get the optimal results.